In the previous video, we learned about the Gaussian curve and how data points when fall in the normal distribution when your material that you are using it has been held stable and your analytical system is stable you will see all your data points fall in the Gaussian curve. But how does that apply in the laboratory? That is what we will see in this video. And I am sure all of you would have heard of Levy Jennings charge, which is generally called the LJ charge. And that is for graphically representing your data in the lab using the Gaussian principle. Let us see how this happens. Levy Jennings, let us examine the history of the Levy Jennings briefly. W. Shewart, an American physicist and engineer and statistician in 1931 proposed applying statistical based control charts to interpret industrial manufacturing processes. And in 1950, Levy and Jennings suggested the use of Shewart's control chart in clinical laboratories. So now let us go back to our Gaussian. I hope you remember the basic principles that we talked about, the probabilities, the percentages that fall under each standard deviations. To recap, we learned earlier on that 68% of the data points will fall within the 1SD region, 95% will fall within the 2SD region and the 99.7% will fall in the 3SD region. So that is how far the normal in a, under normal circumstances, the data points will fall. Anything going beyond these points or any shift in the percentages, if the third, third, if the 68 percent happens here, that means there is a shift. If the 68 percent should be confined in this region, assume that 68 percent is going towards the right or the left, that means there is a shift in the mean. So, these are the things that we learned yesterday and let us see how we can use it on the for our laboratories. Now, what we have done here, what have we done here? You just look at this. We have put the Gaussian on its side. Now, the x axis is what here? What is the x and y axis here? The x axis will be the the dots, it is something which is going to represent the data points in some certain kind of manner. We will say, talk about it in a little while. And your y axis will become your standard deviations and your mean. Gaussian curve, which has been tilted on its side, becomes a LJ graph. Let us see this further. How do you make an LJ graph now? Now, draw lines, the y axis through all relevant points, mean, the plus 1 the plus 2 plus 3 SDs, similarly minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 SDs and this is how it happens. So, now this is your Gaussian curve okay? and on your y axis you have all these standard deviations and the mean depicted. On your x axis you have something else. What is that something else? That something else is a frequency in time. It could be daily. One, This is day 1, day 2 or it could be run 1, run 2, whichever way you are planned your QC processes. So, that will be your run. So, every day you will have a run or an every run there will be a data point which will fall somewhere along this grid. I hope that is understood. It is the Gaussian curve again. The way in which your data points will fall will be in the normal distribution if your analytical system is stable and that is how you assess your the validity of your run. Let us go back to yeah, graph that we saw in the previous video, look at this data point. Where is this data point sitting? This data point is sitting outside of your normal distribution. These are the limits that we have set, the minus 3 SD control limit and plus 3 SD control limit and this data point is falling outside. How will this look on a LG chart? On the LG chart, it will look like minus 3 SD. It is gone outside your defined area where the normal distribution will happen. So, assume that this is a LJ graph with a mean of 190.5 and a standard deviation of 2. So, you have assigned your control mean, you have an assigned your first standard deviation negative, first standard deviation positive, second standard deviation negative and positive, third standard deviation negative and positive which is how you define your control limits and then you see that point that on your Gaussian look like this outside of 
your minus 3 SD on your LJ, it will look like this. So, I hope you understand how you interpret the NJ. It becomes immediately evident to you that this run is not a valid run because it is violating the rules. This is the basic principle of understanding an LJ graph. And now you look at this animation. You see an LJ graph with multiple data points. And I am now going to tilt it vertically where the y axis is now horizontal and see what happens. All points fall into a pattern and what is a pattern you see? A Gaussian pattern. Now this is a normal distribution where all the data points are falling where they should be falling following the rule 68 percent within the first standard deviation limits, 95 percent of the data points within the second standard deviation limits and 99.7 within the third standard deviation limit. This is forming a neat Gaussian curve. And now you imagine situations where there are outliers. There are outliers beyond plus 3 ST or beyond minus 3 ST on both sides. Suppose there are multiple data points and imagine what would happen. The Gaussian will widen, isn't it? We talked about it yesterday and that indicates random errors. A widening Gaussian in indicates random errors. We will see more examples in the subsequent videos. And now you imagine that the 68 percent of the values are shifting to one side, say plus one standard deviation. What would you see? The Gaussian curve has completely shifted to one side, which indicates systematic errors. So, these are the ways in which you have to imagine whenever you see an LJ graph, you need to imagine it in terms of a Gaussian. If the data would fall in one direction, if you would tilt that LJ vertically, how will the Gaussian curve form? Will it be forming in the same way that we started off with the normal analytical system or is it widening or is it shifting? So, these are the things that you need to observe on the LJ graph. Then that is when your quality control system becomes meaningful. And if you do not look at these things systematically, you should have a plan in your laboratory how to examine. Your random errors may become evident immediately because it is a 1, 3 S, it is going beyond the standard deviation. It may become very evident immediately and your frontline workers will be able to pick it up. They should be able to pick it up and which is a widening Gaussian and you should take appropriate corrective actions. And on the other hand, the shifting of a mean may be a subtle change and will require periodic reviews by technical supervisory staff. We will talk about it further in the videos. So, you should have a plan to monitor your LJs. It is not adequate if you say I have quality controls in my lab. It is not adequate to say I am making LJ charts in my lab. It is only adequate if you actually monitor and evaluate your LJ graph in a certain systematic way. Your frontline worker should be told what are the rules that he or she should be looking for and the technical supervisory staff should make it a point to look at the graphs in a certain fixed periodic way. So, this is one more we are recapping that once again an LJ is basically a Gaussian on its side and it is separated by a time as frequency. A Gaussian on its side, the rules of the Gaussian, the frequency of the runs and you join all the dots and you, you can look at the pattern of how the LJ is forming. So, you look at this, this is your mean, this is your first standard deviation, second standard deviation. You see most of the points are clustered here, some points are going beyond the second standard deviation, it is a normal LJ. So, there are not too many runs here to, to make those points of 68, 95, 99 understood. You should have enough points of data points, 100 only when you are talking about percentages, you are assuming you have got 100 data points to look at that. But in this case, you have pretty maybe like 20, 25 data points. So, most of them are clustering in the 1 SD region, some of them are going beyond that which makes it a normal Gaussian graph. If you had more runs to the side and you may see more points going up and down which will satisfy your 68, 95, 99 rule. One more important thing, you are running multiple levels of quality controls, maybe 2, maybe 3. For every level, the chart has to be plotted. It is not enough that if you chart one level, every level should be charted and there are rules on how to chart these uh, graphs, uh, more rules which we will talk about in the subsequent videos. Just to getting started on having an LJ graph in your lab, how will you get started? We will explain 
once again the sequence of things that you need to do and we need to again understand LJ graph is a graphical method for displaying the control results and evaluating whether the procedure is in control or out of control and daily control value should be plotted against the time and lines are drawn from one data point to the next data point to understand if there are any trends or shifts or random errors that are happening in your system and the first step when you decide I am going to make an LJ in my lab is to understand the limits, the decision limits. You would want to understand what is a mean, what is a standard deviation, then only you will be able to make a graph. How will you find that mean and standard deviation? We already explained in the earlier videos how to calculate the mean and standard deviation. We will explain again through Excel uh, sheets and how to use Excel sheets in, in, the, in subsequent videos. Um, so, you, you need to understand the basics, understand your mean, understand your standard deviation and then you set the limits and you have, when you set the limits, this, this also we talked about in the previous video, the limits that you would set are plus 1 SD, plus 2 SD and plus 3 SD limits from, from the mean and this chart is created for each level and each control. So, there is one little point that I would like to bring out when we are talking about the 1 SD, 2 SD, 3 SD limits. There are most of the automated machines have got mechanisms for plotting the LJ chart. There is a QZ module in most of the automated, fully automated equipment and in semi-automated equipment you have to do it manually either on paper or using an Excel sheet that is your prerogative. You can do that but for if some equipment you see especially in uh, equipment from SysMax, you see that the 3 ST limits are not set. The limits are only for 1 ST and 2 ST. Laboratories using these machines, please look at your QC modules of your equipments and you will see that the 2 SD is the limit set, which is fine if you know how to use the rules on that. But the Westgard rules that we are going to talk about in the subsequent videos may not become immediately applicable to that. So, a lot of laboratories despite having a built-in QZ module in your equipment may still want to do it outside on the Excel sheet so that you can define the 3 SD limits because what is the problem in uh, limiting yourself to the 2, 2 SD? The problem in limiting the 2 SD is that you have got valid runs, 5 percent of the runs if you remember the rules 9, no, 68, 95, 99 rule, you have got 5 percent of your normal runs going beyond 2 SD. So, you may be uh, rejecting runs unnecessarily that is one thing and the second thing is that uh, a lot of people I have seen in my observation that they since they do not really calculate the correct standard deviation they just leave QZs unattended and so if you do not set your standard deviations correctly even if they are, they are violating rules it will not become immediately evident to you. We will talk more about this when we are talking about setting a correct chart and the chart is created again continue with this discussion the chart has to be created for each test and for each level of control and how to create an LJ chart depends on again how we are going to do it do you have a computerized system available do you have a built-in QZ module in which case you do not need to create a LJ chart outside the caveats I have already described. Look at your module and see whether your uh, QC module in your built in system is allowing for 3 SDs and if not would you want to create your LJ charts outside of the system. So, you make these decisions initially and then you decide how you are going to do it and assuming you are doing, going to do it manually you will need your arithmetic graph paper and calculator to calculate your mean and SDs and if you are doing a computerized system on Excel software it is very easy. We will demonstrate this to you in one of the videos subsequently and quality software programs Westgard QC allows for you to calculate LJs and also the Labs for Life QC soft is a software that allows you to do it real time. The issue with the Westgard's QC software it is not real time you have you can put it in and so the, your sort of your observations will become retrospective which is not what you would want to do in an LJ. In LJ you need a day to day observation. So, I recommend if you use the QC soft if you do not have a built in software uh, in your analytical system. So, if you are going to do it manually this is how you would want to do it. You take a uh, graph paper whatever your mean is you put that value here 
assign your 1 SDs, assign your 2 SDs, 3 SDs, 4 SDs and whenever you are running, write your date, your values, your initials and plot it on a as a data point in these charts. And of course, you have to write the name of the analyte, the lot number of the QC, what is the control material use, there are multiple we talked about different kinds of control material in the previous videos about the commercial controls, whether assayed, non-assayed, who is the provider, every control has a certain name. So, you write the name of the control, what is the units and lot number, expiry date, what is your assigned mean and SD. We will talk about assigned mean and SD in, in the coming videos and, and from when are you doing it till when are you doing it. All these things, target and TEA, we will talk in subsequent videos. At this point in our QC monitoring, a lot of people are not doing the target and TEA, so I would not force you to do this, but if it is a good thing to do, if you have got target values and total error allowable, that also can be put into your LJ chart. This is a format that we are suggesting that you use, especially if you are doing it manually, so that you do not miss out any points. It is very important that this is documentation of the LJ chart is extremely important and especially if you are looking for enable accreditation, this is one thing which will be very, very closely scrutinized. So, it has to be done thoroughly and systematically. So, if you use a chart of this format, however you do it, you will not miss out any finding. And this is just an example of how the mean has been calculated. You are writing down, this is two level control in AST. This is control number 1, control number 2. So, this is an excerpt from an excel sheet, it is very, uh, you look at it, it is very evident, you can put in the formula, it is very easy to calculate it that way. It is 20 days run, calculate mean and SD, mean of the L1 has come up to 72.4 and L2 is 90.4 and then you calculate the 2 SD here and then you assign it on a chart. So, and then you start plotting. So, this is like the L1 chart. The mean has been assigned, the SDs have been assigned, the limits have been assigned. Similarly, in this in this case and then you start plotting the values after you assign your mean and your SDs. So, you may be a little confused now, how do I wait for 20 days or for a minimum number of runs to assign the value. So, we will talk about this in the video on how do you create a chart. Whenever you have a new lot of QC or whenever you are starting a QC program at all, how will you get started? We will talk about it in the subsequent videos. So, the a concept that you need to understand here is that you calculate, put root 20 runs minimum, find out the mean find out the standard deviation of all both levels of controls if it is a tri level control all the three levels of controls and then you do minimum of 20 runs after making your calculations you make a graph that the, the graph that we talked about will start only when you have your numbers ready to start and once you start, you do it plot it daily and then you monitor it daily and periodically both are required and that is how you do your QC program. That is the basic, these are the basics about doing an LJ monitoring. So, one thing that I would like to stress is train your eyes to see, very important. Train the eyes of your staff also to see. Unless you are looking at it very critically, you will miss out precious evidence about your instabilities in your analytical system. So, looking at it closely and making a habit of it, training your staff to do it, these are the vital points of LJ. Getting the QC in your lab itself is a challenge for a lot of you, I understand that. But once you get the QC along with that, make sure that you start a robust QC program. Do you see anything on this uh, picture? If you would look closely, you might see something. This is what I am saying, talking about looking at it closely. Can you look at this point here? Do you see anything? So, if you amplify, you see a dragonfly sitting there. So, that is how closely you have to scrutinize your charts. Unless you scrutinize your charts, it does not add any value. So, to add value to your laboratories, error detection mechanisms, scrutinizing your uh, charts is very important. 
Again, there are multiple ways of looking at your chart. There could be daily reviews in a newborn baby, like just a pictorial, pictorial example I am putting it. You may want to review it, review the baby daily, but once a toddler, you may want to review at a periodicity with a certain frequency. In the case of a laboratory, you would want to have your reviews decided as per the performance of the analyte. It is not a blanket decision. Okay, the quality manager or the technical manager will review it once in a month. No, that is not how it happens. For analytes which are critical and are poorly performing, you might want to review it more frequently. For stable analytes, you can review it less frequently. We will talk about these things in the, again in the videos which are coming up and the another important thing is documentation. Documentation of QCs are extremely important. If you are looking for NABL accreditation, there are four kinds of documentation that NABL is looking for. Values of daily runs, very important. Corrective action proof, evidence of remedial action in the event of QC failures is very important. NABL will look for corrective actions. If there is any violation, the proof of corrective action has to be provided. And so there you have to again make a habit of doing this. And LJ charts on a monthly basis will be examined. And CV tracking for at least six months is also an important thing that NABL does. So we will talk about these in our subsequent videos and also you can look at the QC module which is uploaded on the website to understand more about the documentation requirements in the case of quality controls. So if you look at the standard, where does the standard talk about quality controls again? We had already talked about this yesterday in 5.6, ensuring the quality of examinations. ISO deals with assurance of the quality of examinations. Any non-conformance in this area is dealt with as a major non-conformance and uh, hence documenting your QC related activities is very important. NABL uh, accreditation divided non-conformances into major and minor. Any non-conformance in the area of 5.6 ensuring the quality of examination is considered major. So whatever you are doing, please document with proof of corrective actions. Thank you.